Uh, welcome to the module where you're going to study gravity as well as what's referred to as projectile and satellite motion. Uh, this video is an introduction to these two topics and you'll have reading assignments and quizzes uh, over um, these topics uh, in your book and also on online. So for this introduction, uh, let me start by describing gravity. So gravity is uh, a fundamental interaction. And in any interaction, there are forces. Um, so we can talk about gravitational forces. And an example of a gravitational force is a weight force, right? So um, that's one example of a gravity force. Uh, but the idea is, is actually um, you've had a lot of um, experiences thinking about the weight force and using this equation, the weight equals mg. Um, but this little value g, where does it come from? Um, it turns out that you can uh, show where the value of little g comes from. On Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, it actually comes from Newton's universal law of gravity. So famously, Newton... Uh, was watching or sitting in an apple orchard. Uh, it's, a, it's a field that has a bunch of apple trees. Um, and Newton uh, sees an apple fall to the ground and simultaneously looks up in the sky and also sees the moon. And Newton, you know, it, is a smart guy and he's surrounded by other smart people paying attention to what's going on in nature. And he knows that the moon is not a stationary object up in the sky, but rather the moon is going around in orbit uh, around the earth. People have measured this. So, um, so the moon is going around the earth and Isaac Newton wonders what is the relationship between the moon going around the earth and the fact that apples and other objects fall to the ground. And what he realizes, and, and this is very interesting, is they must have the same origin. Both of those things happening. Uh, the apple falling to the ground is often referred to as a projectile motion, although it, the apple hasn't been projected, it's just been dropped. And the moon going around the earth is going around in an orbit of a particular shape. That shape is called elliptical. And, he, and Isaac Newton's realization is uh, they must be the same issue, right? The apple falling and the moon going around in orbit. So Isaac Newton, over many, many years in the late 1600s, develops a way to think about gravity. And he uh, decides that the best way to describe this universal law of gravity is as an inverse square law. And this is important, and you'll study this uh, in, a, in slightly more detail um, while you're reading. So this, this is an important detail. So please uh, look for it while you're reading. All right, so inverse square law. Uh, not only that, but this is interesting. Um, when you write down a law that is going to connect up ideas of force and it turns out mass and distance, since these don't have uh, simple connections between their units, um, turns out that sometimes you have to introduce what's referred to as a universal constant. And the idea of this universal constant, which is referred to as capital G, as opposed to lowercase g, capital G has the same value everywhere in the universe, unlike lowercase g, 
which has this value here, 9.8 meters per second squared, only at the surface of the Earth, or um, at the surface of the Earth, that's its value. But if you go to the moon, for example, on the surface of the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared. So something about this universal constant and also data about, say, the moon or the Earth. So if you mix this universal constant together with data, mass data and distance data about the Earth or the moon, then you can predict the values for the accelerations due to gravity. Some other ideas that are introduced uh, while you're reading about gravity um, are again, the notion of weight, but also getting you to think about what is it, what is this feeling called weightlessness? And I'd like you to notice that an astronaut may feel weightless, but absolutely does not have a zero weight, right? So this is interesting, and you can look for that while you're reading. Also, gravity is what's responsible for ocean tides. Um, yeah, so uh, this, is, this is also really interesting. Um, a, another idea, actually, is, so this inverse square law, there is a way to understand this idea here as related to a gravitational field, right? A genuine force field, an actual physical force field something similar to what people imagine, say, in Star Trek or other science fiction films. Um, yeah, so that there is a very real sense in which you can think of gravity as being associated with a physical field. But there is alternatively, so I'll just put some slashes, a different way of thinking about what is gravity. And gra uh, Einstein, Albert Einstein, is famous for something, a, a theory called the general relativity. And this general relativity, what it does is it says that gravity or gravitational effects where things are attracted to each other is not due to a gravitational field, but is instead due to the fact that mass curves space and time. Um, and extreme versions of this curved space and time idea lead to an extreme situation of a maximally curved space-time referred to as a black hole. And you can read about these issues. Uh, another really interesting thing um, that I think is kind of the main point or the sort of the, the big idea in the background for why gravity is important is gravity is the interaction behind large-scale structure in the universe. So if you've ever wondered why do galaxies look the, same, the, look the way they do, it's because of gravity. Why does the solar system look the way it does? It's because of gravity. Uh, why do stars form from space dust? It's because of gravity, right? Um, how a star burns its nuclear fuel, that's not, well, you, you might say that the dust got close enough to each other because of, of gravity, but there is some really interesting nuclear physics that's separate from gravity going on as well inside of a star. But the, the initial reason that we even have stars is because of gravity. So gravity is a fundamental interaction that represent or that is the name of the fact that in nature mass is attracted to mass and that's referred to as gravity so projectiles and satellite motion is is um, another topic that you're studying and this is a motion that is because of gravity so the idea is is projectile motion and satellite motion these apply when an object is free from all influences except gravity. 
And these motions give rise to trajectories, where a trajectory is the, sh the, the path that an object takes. And an object, a projectile, can take a parabola. This is sort of the path of a ball. If you throw it up in the air, it goes up and then comes back down. And the parabola has, it's an interesting shape. Um, satellites, for example, the moon going around the Earth, the moon is a satellite of Earth. The moon takes what's referred to as an elliptical trajectory. So its orbit path has a very special mathematical shape, just like a parabola is a special shape, um, called an ellipse. And an ellipse sort of looks like a circle, but it's elongated. In fact, a circle is a particular special example of an ellipse. Um, but this might be the location of the Earth, and the moon is traveling around the Earth along this elliptical orbit. And an interesting thing that you're going to see while reading about projectile and satellite motion is the fact that these parabolas are actually really small sections of ellipses. Okay, I hope you enjoy uh, your work um, in gravity and projectile and satellite motion.